You're listening to 91 Reasons, a journey into the twisted landscape of pop culture. Keep your hands and arms inside the podcast at all times. And now, The Voice, Jeff Tucker. Hey, it's Jeff. We're here. It's another episode of 91 Reasons. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, quick hello to Willie Wall, who I ran into at Knott's the other day. It was good to see you. Thanks for listening to the show. Uh, it means a lot when I hear people who come up to me and like, oh, Jeff, I love the show, and that makes me feel so great. Thank you. That being said, we're going to talk again. Oh, I can't believe we're talking about it again. But we're going to talk about Star Wars Land, Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. Uh, the the Black Spire outpost at Disneyland, and mm-hmm. it's weird that you know I work at a theme park, so there's a little bit of bias here as far as theme park goes. Uh, I I don't really like to talk about knots a lot here on the show, but uh, every once in a while it sort of bleeds over because I do like going to theme parks. It's one of the you know it's a great thing to do. It's fun. Rides are great. Ambiance is great. I dig all that stuff. So I did get to go to Galaxy's Edge for a preview day. The the weirdest part about that day was that nobody had a cell phone. We had to put our cell phones in a sealed bag and not use them, look at them, or anything. So it was weird to be at a modern-day theme park where no one was taking a picture or a selfie or a Instagram picture of their food. None of that. People were living in the moment. So the experience I got out of Galaxy's Edge might be different than anyone who got to go when it opened when cell phones were allowed. It's a different vibe. Uh, People are more in tune with what's going on. They're not distracted looking at their uh, silly phones. So it is interesting to think about that. I actually know people who have worked on Galaxy's Edge, and the stuff that they did, the stuff that made it to the park, there's some really amazing stuff there. Uh, The problem, and if you've been any kind of, you know, a consumer of online content lately, you know that the problem is that the land is very sterile, there's only one ride, it's not a very good ride, it's mostly overpriced souvenirs, overpriced food, Uh, the lightsaber thing is amazing, but it's too hundred dollars which is a huge buy-in as big a star wars fan as i am i would never pay two hundred dollars for a lightsaber because of the experience i can go to any con and pick up a uh, bootleg luke skywalker lights lightsaber for 80 bucks and be happy with it and not spend the extra 135 because there is tax on it too for what they're offering at Galaxy's Edge. Uh, And I think, like Rogue One, because remember, I saw Rogue One, and I couldn't figure out why I was upset with the movie, so I went and saw it again, and that's when I realized that after watching the trailer, the movie in the theaters was not the one promised in the trailer. Uh, Jen Orso makes no... Um, movement that she's going to join the Empire like the mo- the trailer implies. Uh, there are some amazing scenes, including the TIE fighter on the dock that is not in the uh, finished film. The run across the, uh, the beach is not in the film because they did a lot of post-editing to really tighten the movie. And in doing so, if you were going and expecting the trailer, it wasn't very good. And the trailer, in quotes, for Galaxy's Edge was D23, where they showed all of the concept art for the land and roaming robots and aliens and adventures and not just buy, 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 get in line for the ride, buy, 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 leave. There was more to it. It was very immersive. And that part was interesting. And I think now that we've we've seen it and we've seen what they've done with the land, the immersiveness is actually its downfall because it doesn't have any immersiveness. And the immersiveness that it does have of we're at Black Spire Outpost, we're not in any land that you've seen in Star Wars, that's where it goes awry because you have no emotional connection to anything in the land except the Millennium Falcon, which looks amazing. And that's why everybody goes on and on about it because it's the only thing in the land that you can cling to as I recognize that from the movies. 
you know, I don't have any big emotions for First Order Stormtroopers or Kylo Ren or Rey or Chewbacca with gray hair or a blue X-Wing that they... It's all sort of left and right of what I like. It's like... It'd be like having an affinity and really loving the Kenner mini rigs, which everybody got because they were cheap, but they're not in the film. And when Kenner was asked about it, they said, well, they're just to the right or just to the left of camera, but they feel like they're part of the Star Wars universe. That's exactly Galaxy's Edge. It's just to the left, just to the right of Star Wars, the motion picture, but it's not anything that you recognize, so you don't have any emotional attachment to it. It's great seeing a moisture evaporator. It's great seeing the Falcon, but it's not... It's not what they tried to make it. And what they tried to make it was the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, where you go in and it's all movie-based locations, exactly down to the details. And the stuff that they couldn't make, they fudged. Everybody just shrugs and goes, well, hey, it's pretty good. And with Star Wars, I don't know for certain. But it seems as if there was a little bit of... We can't duplicate everything in the movie, so let's not even duplicate anything in the movie, and uh, uh, we'll just make our own version. Well, that's great if if you're selling something that's not as iconic as Star Wars, and that's where the problem comes in. That's where your brain disconnects from the land, because there's nothing recognizable. Even the ship that Kylo Ren comes out of is not recognizable. And there's this online rumor now that the reason it's all that way is because if they had used original trilogy stuff, they still have to pay George Lucas 25% and they're trying to cut him out. I don't know if any of that's true or not. But, you know, if it is, just write a check. Write a check and make stuff that's amazing. So, along those lines, to that end, I put together what... I would have wanted in the Galaxy's Edge. And I didn't want Galaxy's Edge. I wanted Star Wars Land. And Star Wars Land is different from Galaxy's Edge. Star Wars Land is not immersive. <clears throat> sure, there are little pockets that are that are immersive that you can walk in and feel like you're part of the Star Wars Land. But most of it is and, and it, most of it is just an homage to the greatest science fiction trilogy of all time. Star Wars the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. And to a lesser degree, the prequels. And to a lesser degree, the new Disney trilogy. Hey, listen, you got to pay your dues. It's hard to be instantly loved. Very few things are. Most things need a minute to get on their feet. Even Star Wars was rolled out in a few select theaters. And the people that saw it were blown away. So a few more people got to see it. And then a few more people got to see it. And a year later... It was still in theaters. That's where that amazing poster of the cake and the Star Wars figures. And the fact that the toys weren't ready by the time the movie came out because nobody expected it to be that kind of cultural phenomenon. They had to pay their dues. The pop culture dues that you have to pay to be popular. Very few things come out of the box and are instantly popular. It takes a lot to become discovered and embraced by the fans. And before I go into this and you say, well, you know, Jeff, no one wants to see a lot of cheap, off-the-shelf Star Wars-themed rides, you know. Well, Disney's already done that. They have Dino Land in Florida, which is made to look cheap, which I <clears throat> I think that's bizarre. But closer to home, here in Anaheim, they have Cars Land, which has a big e-ticket ride, buildings from the movie, and... Some little off-the-shelf rides that are rethemed that put you in the action, but don't worry about being on a specific day in the Star Wars universe, in a specific place. You're just in Radiator Springs, and maybe the stuff you see was in the movie, and maybe there's some things that weren't in the movie, but they feel like they were in the movie, or they make you feel like you're experiencing a little bit of Star Wars fun. And if I had to sum up everything I want to talk about, The word fun should come up again and again because Star Wars should be fun. It should be so much fun to hang out with these characters that we love so much, to step into a vehicle that reminds us of the toys we played with as children and, more importantly, the toys that we now pass on to our children because that's what Star Wars has become. It's this rite of passage now. 
you know, I have kids. You pass it on to them. You watch the movies with them. You, you, they see your excitement. They want to be part of that. So they find the things in the movie that excite them. And we've lost all that. Galaxy's Edge doesn't have any of that. You know, they serve a sausage in a flatbread and they give it a Star Warsy name. And it's just not fun. And that's the problem I have with it. I feel like Tom Hanks in Big when he goes, he raises his hand and he goes, I don't get it. Well, you don't see Jeff, it's Star Wars. You, They have a sausage and a flatbread and it's a Ronto wrap. And raise your hand again. I, I still don't get it. What don't you get? Well, why is a sausage and a flatbread fun? Well, because it's a Ronto, but it's not a Ronto. There's no such thing as a Ronto. Oh, I see what you're doing there. So, in the interest of bringing fun to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and rebranding it as Star Wars Land, you know, and I say that because at Knott's, most people don't call it Camp Snoopy. They ask me where Snoopy Land is. Where's Snoopy Land? Well, and I don't, I don't go, oh, oh, it's called Camp Snoopy. I say, it's right over there. Oh, cool. Thanks. My pleasure. You know, fun. It's about having fun. It's not about being chastised. So <clears throat> we're going to step into a galaxy far, far away. And we're going to take a walk through my idiot armchair version of of Star Wars Land. Here we go. Oh, we're, we're in Star Wars Land. Look at that. There's music playing and sound effects and spaceships. Okay, so Star Wars Land. I, I've seen that online photo, that drawing somebody did of what uh, a Star Wars full theme park would, would look like. And I didn't study it, so if I do some overlap, it's pure kismet because I didn't study it in hopes of taking some stuff from there. But if Star Wars is a big land, and the one at Galaxy's Edge is a pretty big footprint, we would have areas that represent Tatooine, the Death Star, Hoth, Bespin, the Ewok Village. And it would have things that each member of the family could enjoy. In Star Wars land, we would have Kitty rides, you know, for small children. That would you go on, you take pictures of them. They have a good time. These are in the industry called flat rides. These are rides that just spin around. They go up and down. They have a little bit of action to them, and they're themed. So we would have obviously a land speeder spinner ride. You know, it would look like any of those rides at a carnival, but but it would look expensive. And each of the land speeders would be fully detailed, and it would hold two children. They would get in, or two small adults. And it would go around in a circle, and it would bounce up and down like the land speeder, and it would be fun. One of the bigger rides we would have would be the Jawa Shooter Ride. That's where you get into a mini version of a sand crawler, and you uh, pick up your Jawa Blaster, and you have a wild spin through a, a bigger sand crawler where you are shooting, not killing, but stunning droids for points and the droids would move they have all the droids from the movie that were in that scene you'd see r2 and 3po near the end and you would get a score and it would tell you how good of a jawa you are and you'd hear utini and all of those great jawa isms but you would shoot and stun the droids uh here's some more fun stuff you would have you would have a uh you remember that uh, place called Discovery Zone, and they'd have a big pit. They actually have them now. It's um, those jumping places, <clears throat> but they have big pits full of foam that you jump in, jump into. And the foam pieces and the pit would be themed to Dagobah. So it would show kids what it's like to slip into the quicksand on Dagobah, and for all the parents, it would be a reminder of the Kenner playset where the foam... Uh, quicksand was i mean it was the quicksand was made of foam so it would be um very cool very cool oh wait my my ambient music just went to a commercial look at this we gotta get back to indoor okay here we go okay there would be a walkthrough attraction and the walkthrough attraction would be the space slug from the empire strikes back he would walk through his mouth 
and you in, in there you'd actually see <clears throat> a force perspective falcon the ground would be spongy and you would have to uh, avoid the minox flying above we'd also have a ball pit cuz you got to have a ball pit uh, and the ball this these were not a fashion and i've always liked ball pits my kids were always big fans of ball pits they went out of fashion because they're expensive because you have to clean them every night but we're sparing no expense in this uh, imagined Star Wars land. And our ball pit would be themed to the trash compactor from Star Wars. And when the walls start to close in, it's time to leave and let the next group come in. And watch out for the Dianoga. He'll pop his head up at any time. And those are cool. They're fun. Some of the bigger rides would be... You would have a... If you've ever seen a Pony Express at Knott's or the Tron Coaster at Shanghai, we would have one, but it would be speeder bikes. So you would get strapped into a speeder bike and you would fly through the moon of Endor avoiding trees and other biker scouts. I I would ride that tomorrow. Are you kidding? We would have a drop ride. You gotta have a drop ride. They have one, it's called Galaxy... Guardians of the Galaxy Prison Breakout Ride, whatever it's called. It used to be the Tower of Terror. Ours would be the uh, escape pod from the Rebel Blockade Runner at the beginning of Star Wars where R2 and 3PO escaped to the moon of Endor. So that would be like a full adventure inside and then you get into the escape pod and then it drops you down to Tatooine. I I want that today. Uh, There would also be different attractions. Uh, Escape rooms are very popular. So there would be a place where you could sign up to enter the Death Star cell block escape room where you have to help Princess Leia escape from her cell by solving puzzles and eventually diving through the garbage chute into an adult version of uh, foam-filled trash compactor. I mean, that's fun. Are you kidding? The big e-ticket attractions would be a simulator ride of the X-Wing where you have to destroy the Death Star. So instead of the Falcon where six people go in and four people have a crappy time and two people actually get to drive the Falcon, uh, everybody would be the pilot of their own X-Wing. I know there's a way to do it. Capacity be damned. If it's a good ride, people will wait for it. They waited 10 hours for the the uh, Hagrid motorcycle ride, the... Uh, Banshee Dragon Ride for Avatar Land had a 10-hour wait. If the ride is good, people will wait for it. The other one, and this this was just me because I'm a big dork. I would love a motion simulator, or maybe even it's not a simulator. Maybe it's actually a physical ride where you get into the cockpit of an ATST and the ride goes through Hoth as you're trying to destroy the shield generator. And it actually has that crazy up and down motion of the ATSDs, you know, they're going ka clank, ka clank, ka clank. I oh, that would be so much fun. Okay, we're gonna keep going here. Let's talk about restaurants and shops. Of course, we would have the Moss Isley Cantina. It would look just like the one in the movie with the same characters. You'd be able to go in at any time and hang out, grab a table. Meet Greedo. Try to warn him not to get shot by hand. You'd be hassled by uh, Walrus Man and uh, Dr. Evazan or whatever his name is. Oh, that would be cool. We would also have the... Uh, you got to have an upcharge, a fine dining upcharge. And that would be the Bespin Dining Hall Fine Dining Adventure where you get to sit at the table with Darth Vader and Boba Fett and have dinner. Just like Han and Leia did in The Empire Strikes Back. Lando shows up to rescue you at the end to clear the room for the next set of diners. Oh, come on, man. I want that. Uh, We'd have an Ewok Village barbecue where they're barbecuing food over a spit, just like they were going to do to our heroes in Return of the Jedi. We would have a Boba Fett drink stand where you can uh, uh, get your drink from Boba Fett's rocket pack, you pull a button and you pull a lever and the drink comes out the bottom. We would have a a, a bigger character dining that's not as intimate, but a bigger one. You would have the uh, Gavin Celebration dining and show where you get to see Luke and Han get their medals 
and while you eat with Princess Leia. I, doesn't that sound great? We'd have the uh, the Tuscan Raider sandwich shop with a play on Sand People sandwich shop, Jabba's Palace, Gyros or Heroes, however you say it. And yes, we would serve blue milk. It would be a smoother, not frozen concoction. And you would go down the steps into Luke's house where Aunt Beru would serve it to you. And you could choose to drink it there or on the patio, which looks like Luke's house with moist evaporators and the whole bit. Uh, Sign me up today. Uh, There would also be a a full-size... Millennium Falcon there, just like in Galaxy's Edge. But this one, you'd be able to go up the ramp and walk through it and look inside. It doesn't have to be a ride. It can just be a static walkthrough. There's something wrong with that. The shops, we would have uh, Anakin's Mannequins, which is a men's dress shop that sells Jedi robes that you get to wear in the land. Why not? Watto's Junk Shop, there's our first nod to the prequel trilogy. Uh... A place that sells remote control land speeders that you build yourself. Uh, the droid thing is great. It's a little expensive for my taste. But why not sell people remote control land speeders of all shapes and sizes? We would have a place where you could buy a lightsaber. But it's the Jedi Temple lightsaber training. Where you buy your saber and you are then trained by a Jedi Master on how to use it. Echo Base Sportswear. Where you can buy heavy jackets for winter. Ewok Village Toys, Toshi Station Toys. You could pick up your own set of power converters. And, oh, how about a shooting gallery? A shooting gallery on Hoth where you have to shoot moving probe droids. Oh, that's so cool. And, of course, a Slave Leia bikini shop because you need to have a Slave Leia bikini. And there was all this weird where they were going to change her name to Hut Slayer Leia, but... Uh, according to the Kenner packaging, she is, and always will be, Slave Leia. Along the, uh, around the land, you can stop and charge your phone at a Gonk cell phone charger. I think they have those somewhere. I'm pretty no. I saw those at uh, one of the conventions. They had converted a power droid into a cell phone charger. So credit to those guys. But we're gonna we're gonna put it in the land. And the moist evaporators would be where you fill up your water bottle or get a drink from a drinking fountain, you know, because why not? There would also be uh, some shows, Legends of the Jedi, which would be like um, Mystery Lodge, where you could see real force ghosts. Uh, Every day there would be a parade through the land of Darth Vader and all his troops, just like the 501st already does. What else we got? Oh, why not a uh, a shooting gallery where you sit in the gunner station of the Millennium Falcon and fire at TIE Fighters? Doesn't that seem like a no-brainer? Um, there's a Sarlacc ball toss where the balls look like thermal detonators and you have to get them into the Sarlacc mouth to win a prize. And one of my favorites of the whole thing, whack a Dianoga. So the Dianoga's eye pops up and you whack it down. High score wins a Dianoga plush that looks just like the Kenner one. Oh, give me this now. Come on. How about a... uh, You ever been to the Redwood Challenge Trail at DCA? We'd have something similar to that, but it would be on Dagobah, where you follow the path of Luke swinging on vines and dodging uh, swamp creatures in the... Path of the Jedi obstacle course. Uh, Well, you know, it's all-encompassing. You have to dodge Tusken Raiders, swing over the Death Star, use the Force, and at the end, you are a certified Jedi Knight. Uh, There's just some other stuff I'm going to run through here. Nothing real major. Uh, Squidhead Sushi Bar. Uh, If you know the character 8D8, he's the one that's torturing the power droid in Jabba's Palace. He would have eight D eights, eat D eats. Uh, Admiral Akbar's. It's a wrap. We would serve fine wraps there. Bantha burgers, Boba Fettuccine, Dagobah donuts, Boosh burritos, <clears throat> Greedo burritos, Yoda soda, Chief Chirpa churros. How about a nice big bowl of ham salad 
Thank you, Hardware Wars. 2-1-B Tacos. Uh, remember Biggs? Luke's friend that went to the Academy. He'd have his own fruits cart where a guy dressed as Big would sell you apples, oranges, or the specialty Biggs figs. You know what I'm saying? I went through that pretty fast. But what we're, what we're saying is, what I'm saying, not we, what I'm saying is, put the fun back in Star Wars. Stop with any kind of political agenda or nonsense and just make the movies and the land fun. The whole point of Disneyland is you escape into another world of fun. I don't care about the immersive to the nth degree, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. When I was a cowboy on the streets of Knott's Berry Farm, when somebody pulled out a cell phone, well, they didn't have cell phones back then. That's how long ago it was. <clears throat> but when somebody pulled out a camera, we posed for a picture. We didn't say, what is that strange object you're pointing at us? Is it from an... We didn't do that. It's okay to not be... It's, it's, not, the, it's not the Ren Fair. I think that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be the Ren Fair. The Ren Fair is the Ren Fair. If you want that immersiveness of thou dost so, go to the Ren Fair. Star Wars should be just fun. Star Tours is fun. Doesn't matter that it doesn't make any sense. Who cares if it makes sense? When Star Tours came out in 1987, Return of the Jedi was four years old. We watched Luke blow up the Death Star. So when there's a Death Star in Star Tours and we blow it up, Nobody walked off that ride and said, you know, it wasn't cool because the Death Star is already... No, nobody did that. We walked off and went, when can we ride it again? How long is the line? And if you've been there on days where the line's non-existent and you can get off the ride and go right back on, that is pure heaven. That is what every theme park Star Wars fan is looking for. And the fact that Nobody's going to this thing. The proof's right there. It should be mobbed. I predicted at the beginning of the summer that Disneyland would experience sold-out crowds every day from the day Galaxy's Edge opened to the public. The fact that they're not, to me, is bewildering. I cannot even fathom that nobody's going. It seems crazy. I, I would kill I would kill to have a pass. I can't afford it, but I would kill to have a pass right now to be able to go to Galaxy's Edge anytime or Disneyland anytime I wanted. I'm not a big fan of Galaxy's Edge. I'd go and check it out. There were a lot of nooks and crannies I didn't get to visit because my time there was so short. But the online stuff, I mean, it's pretty evident that it's not a home run. And as a Star Wars fan, that hurts me in ways you can't imagine. You know, Star Wars has been my whole life. My first kid was legally named Luke Skywalker. That's, I mean, that's, in a nutshell, Star Wars. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. So, thank you for indulging me in my own version of Star Wars land. Uh, I'd love to know, like, what, what were you expecting? What did you want to see in it? What's missing? Tell me. Leave a comment. Go to iTunes and give us a good review and tell me your Star Wars ideas. I'm going to go watch Star Wars now. The original one with Mark Hamill, the fresh-faced young kid who saves the galaxy. Oh, man. I'm Jeff Tucker, and this is 91 Reasons. And may the Force be with you. Thanks for listening to 91 Reasons. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. Find us on Facebook. Is anyone even still listening? Well, what are you afraid of? A fate worse than death? No, just death. Isn't that enough?